Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining this session. My name is Ron Weedman. Um, I'm a member of the TA Success team here at IOP Publishing. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about open access and transformative agreements and how you might be able to take advantage. So let's begin by going over a little bit what we'll cover today in a little bit more detail. Um, first, if you're unaware of who we are and as a publisher, we'll give you a little introduction into, to us, and then we'll talk about what an open access agreement is and then how to find out if you're eligible and the benefits of publishing open access and then how exactly to publish under a tr transformative agreement. So first, let's start out who we are as a publisher. So IOP Publishing is a scientific publishing company wholly owned by the Institute of Physics. That's the IOP for short. And they're a leading scientific society promoting physics and supporting researchers since 1874. So quite a long history. As a society publisher, we are embedded in the community we, that we serve. And our mission is to deliver impact, recognition, and value to the scientific community. We work closely with librarians, researchers, and partners worldwide to publish academic peer-reviewed journals and conference series. We also have an ebooks program and the world's leading physics magazine called Physics World. The Institute of Physics is based in, the, in London, but the head office of IOP Publishing is based in Bristol, United Kingdom. Although most of the staff are UK-based, we are a global business, and we have employees based around the world in Europe, the US, Japan, India, Australia, Mexico, and Singapore, just to name a few. As a society publisher, all of our profits we make go right back to the IOP. Roughly 85% of their income comes through us. So as a company, our success is vital in ensuring that the IOP can continue to fund their charitable activities and their outreach programs. Although our published content aids the dissemination of research in markets across the world, it also builds the international links that fuel scientific discovery and technological innovation. So over half of our journals, 100 plus, are owned solely by IOP Publishing. Our other titles are published in partnership with other leading societies and research organizations including the American Astronomical Society, the Chinese Physical Society, and the Electrochemical Society. We continue to expand our, expand our eBooks program, which started almost 10 years ago. In total, we have published roughly 800 eBooks, or over 800 eBooks, from authors across the globe. We have three conference series titles, some of the largest in the publishing space. The publication of early stage research through our proceedings journals remains critical to our mission. In 2022, we published 28,000 open access proceedings papers, representing conferences from 47 countries. Our science news program represents a key part of our mission to communicate world-class research and innovation to the widest possible audience, ensuring that thought-provoking coverage across a diverse range of subjects. We aim to be the most trusted and most respected provider of news and commentary for the global science community. And notably, our Physics World podcasts are now in the top 10 of the phys of physics podcasts on iTunes in the United States. And so as we did start off as a physics publisher, um, our journal's portfolio has since expanded into um, different subject areas. We now have a more diverse range of journals, which covers material science, astronomy and astrophysics, bioscience, and environmental science alongside physics. Last year, we published over 29,000 articles. Roughly 10% of these were featured in the top 10% of cited research for the physical sciences, and 18 of our journals featured in the top quartile of their relevant subject category. What you're looking at is essentially a selection of these top tier journals that have competitive metrics for citations and download performance of our published content. We have a growing, fully open access environmental journals portfolio, building on the brand and prestige of our flagship title, 
environmental research letters. We also have a strong bio portfolio featuring biofabrication, which is considered the leading journal in its field. And we continue to expand our journal's offering into new research fields, such as machine learning and neuromorphic computing. So that's enough about us and who we are as a publisher. So let's talk about what exactly is an open access agreement. You might hear them be called several different things. Uh, they're also referred to as read and publish agreements, um, open access agreements, but we at IOP Publishing call them transformative agreements because we kind of, by this definition, um, there are contract negotiated between institutions and publishers to transform the business model underlying scholarly publishing towards a fully OA model. So because of that transformation, we thought it'd be most apt to call them transformative agreements. I'm going to try to go over this pretty quickly, but it is important when we're talking about open access, there is a lot of key terminology. Um, I'm mostly going to point to the top two um, definitions because they're the most relevant to transformative agreements. But, you know, for open access publishing, there are costs incurred um, by us as the publisher for our in-house peer review and our editorial development and production. And these costs kind of become what they call an article publication charge or an APC. As you can see at the bottom, our transformative agreements provide gold open access which allows authors to immediately self-archive their work. And so gold open access, to have a clear definition, it makes the final version of an article freely and permanently accessible for everyone immediately after publication, which is how authors can immediately self-archive their work. So that's what our transformative agreements provide. Paywall closed access is a little self-explanatory and green open access is something that we'll probably be transitioning away from as um, we embrace more uh, gold open access, um, but there's simply just in a 12 month embargo um, that the author's article will be behind a paywall um, and then it becomes open access after that. But as I said, this is something we're kind of moving away from as we embrace more gold OA. So when talking about our journals, there are two types of journals um, that the majority of our transformative agreements cover the APCs in um, and that's our fully open access journals which essentially means that all the articles in them are immediately free to read and reuse without any subscription charges access fees paywalls um, but obviously to support the cost of managing peer review and publication there's an apc that applies when an author submits an article then there's the hybrid open access journals um, which are subscription-based journals, and it gives the author a choice whether they want to publish in a, on, behind a paywall or publish open access. And if they choose publishing open access, then that APC charge will apply. So the majority of our transformative agreements cover the cost of those APCs in both of these journals, providing authors an avenue to publish open access without paying any APCs. So are you eligible? It turns out you might just be. We've been growing the number of transformative agreements pretty rapidly over the last couple of years. Um, and now we can safely say that we have over 900 um, agreements with over 900 institutions across 33 countries. So it is very possible that you are at an institution that has an agreement. So how can you check? So the QR code on the top right, that will bring you to our transformative agreement hub. Um, and that's basically that first number one there, the TA publishing support page. I'm just gonna flip to the next slide to give you um, a visual represent representation of what it is. This is what you'll see. Um, and where you would check if you have a transformative agreement is that red circle on the left, the link says, are you covered by a transformative agreement? When you go and click there, you will bring be brought to another page that's kind of an index of countries. Um, you'll find your country. And on that page, we'll have a list of all of the institutions we have agreements for or agreements with. So that's a way that for you to just choose your country, 
Uh, you, I think the easiest way to do it would be control F, um, type your institution name, and then you can verify whether or not your institution has a transformative agreement with us. I'm just going to go back. So the second way is to use our journal finder, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a second here. Um, and the other way you can find out is by simply asking your library team or if there is a LibGuide, um, definitely look there as we, when we uh, discuss these transformative agreements with librarians, we do kind of make sure that they have all the resources and all the information to put into their LibGuides and library knowledge base. So be sure to check there and you should be able to find some information. At the bottom, I have this little reminder to make sure that you check the eligible journals list for your agreement. Uh, and that's namely because uh, we have the majority of our journals are included as eligible journals. Um, but that doesn't mean that every institution agrees to all of the journals. So there are um, a couple different lists. There's four lists in total of eligible journals. And most of our agreements include all of them. But um, on an institution to institution basis, uh, there are some variances there. So you might want to just double check which journals are specifically included in your agreement. So I'm going to skip past here. And talk a little bit more about the IOP Publishing Journal Finder. Um, this is something that we partnered with Kronos Hub for to have developed. It's, it's branded um, with IOP Publishing. It works for only our journals. And essentially, it's a really helpful resource for prospective authors who are looking to find a home for their paper, and they want to see which different avenues they can use to publish. So the listed at the bottom here are just a couple of questions that this tool, I think, um, can provide an answer for. And I think the top one is a really, really good example. Um, you know, if I was a material scientist and I'm looking for a journal, I want to publish open access, and I want to find a journal in the material science portfolio to publish my paper in. Um, and I want to see if there's a transformative agreement there. This tool will answer that exact question. So you'll just have to go to the tool, type in your institution, and then you can select, so let me filter by material science. And then you'll just see all of the journals in material science. And then you can kind of scroll through and see which ones there'll be a little notice at the bottom if they're covered by a transformative agreement if your institution has one. So you'll be able to clearly see that the APCs are covered and then you can just go right ahead and submit your paper. So the reason why we're talking about all this is because there's great benefits of open access. Um, you know, a lot of it is a little bit common sense because with the paywalls um, and immediate access for the public, uh, there's just simply a greater exposure um, and with the immediacy of its access, it can raise the impact of your work as it gets out into the community as quickly as possible. And namely, you'll see this um, through a growth in downloads and citations, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. But um, and generally, without any paywalls, you're expanding scientific equality across the globe. Uh, again, with the public immediately having access to research is fabulous. And our transformative agreements um, comply with all of the major funder requirements, so there's no issues um, if you're worried about that. So when talking about downloads and citations, we actually did a self-review of, you know, what is the difference between publishing OA versus non-OA, and we did this on our portfolio. So we saw, looking back, that um, articles that were published OA got 81% higher downloads than um, non-OA articles, which is uh, a significant, significant percentage. Um, so that's a lot more eyes on your research. And the same kind of higher impact you can see is that over 30% uh, more citations for OA articles than non-OA. And if you're familiar with Altmetric, um, and if you're not, it's essentially um, a tool used to track and collate um, article mentions in a very a variety of sources, from social media to blogs to news websites to patents to policy documents. Um, so it's basically tracking where your where research is mentioned. And uh, we saw 
similarly a high a, an increase in attention scores there um, by 27% for OA. Um, so those are just like not insignificant numbers. Um, so the benefits are really clear of why you should publish OA. And again, the orange box is just kind of um, classic benefits of OA publishing. You know, we're not really changing our production services for this. We're You're still going to get um, high quality peer review. Um, and I, as I said before, our TAs are completely compliant with all of the um, current funder mandates. So you don't have to worry about meeting those requirements. And then you also benefit from the CCBY license, which is the copyright you would have to sign to publish under the agreement. And it's the most commonly used license for gold OA publishing. And it allows the author to maintain the copyright, but also provides liberal reuse rights as well. So some pretty great benefits to publish open access. As it is, this is the environmental conference. Um, I thought it'd be good to share this little poll that we took um, because I think it's just a great testament to what researchers have on top of mind about open access publishing. But, you know, we simply asked, uh, what do you perceive as the greatest advantage of publishing OA? Um, and obviously I talked a lot about the downloads and citations, but obviously that wasn't the most important um, for the people who answered this poll because a strong um, majority of people said that just having free access for everyone was the greatest advantage, which we agree, which is exactly why we as a publisher are focusing on these transformative agreements. We want more and more authors to be able to freely access without any kind of financial barriers. And we want to make it as easy as possible to get research out there and making an impact. So this is just a little testimonial um, from an author. I just, well, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I did really like um, the first answer here to the question, you know, how easy was it to publish under, uh, to publish open access under the transformative agreement? Um, and their response, to be honest, I do not remember the details. I think that means because there was no particular difficulty. Um, I, I, I like that answer because that's how we are trying to make it. Um, I will go into more detail about how we kind of, um, how you can publish under the agreement and how we make it easy for you. But that is kind of the feedback that we, we love to hear. So we're glad authors are finding it easy to publish OA. So, right, exactly. Like, how do you publish um, under under an agreement if you have one? It's really quite straightforward. Uh, it's relatively the same process you go through with any other publication. So an author will submit their manuscript to one of the eligible journals, and then we will identify that article automatically and then inform the corresponding author that we're going to include an we're going to publish your paper, open access, under this transformative agreement. And then we'll send them, the author, uh, the copyright form, the CCBY license, in which they'll have to sign and return to us. And then after that, um, if the article is accepted for publication, um, then we'll publish it immediately, um, open access under the agreement. So it really is kind of just a four-step process here. But to provide a little bit more detail, uh, this is, comes from our step-by-step -step tutorial, basically for authors on how to publish under an agreement. So if you follow that QR code at the top, um, that'll bring you to that guide where it goes into every step with a lot more detail than I'm going over right now. But just to show you the most important parts, um, so you'll start this, the process like any other using our submission system, Scholar One. It's just worthwhile to note that the submission process will vary um, with some of our society partner journals, but uh, generally we use Scholar One for a lot of our publishing. And so you'll start your new submission and then steps one through three are some basic information stuff. And then on step four, this is the critical part, point for our um, automatic identification purposes. You'll have to put in your information, you know, your name and address and things like that, but you also have to put your affiliated institution. So this part is the most critical for us to identify your article. As long as you correctly name your institution and your institution has a transformative agreement, 
then we'll identify your, your article automatically. So just make sure when you're going through this, the process, you know, you just want to be clear about that institution and make double check it. So moving on, there's some more steps, but then in step six, there's just one little option um, that you'll have to select whether you'd like to publish open access or not. Basically, I'm pointing this out to say that don't worry about whatever you choose here. You don't have to make any selection. Or you have to make a selection to continue through the process, but you, it doesn't matter what you select here. As I said, we will identify your art article via your affiliated institution. So whatever you choose here just doesn't matter. The only reason that this step exists is because the publication system is set up for everyone. So there are authors who um, you know, might be publishing in those hybrid journals that um, I mentioned earlier, and maybe they say no to open access or, you know, or they say yes. So the option does make sense for other authors. But if you're publishing under a transformative agreement, you do not have to worry about what you select here. Just select one and move on. So once you actually submit your article um, and we identify it, then you'll receive this email. Um, and this email basically is just notifying you that we're going to publish your article open access under a transformative agreement. There's no opt-in you have to do. You don't even have to reply to this message at all. You don't even really have to read it. Um, but it is good to read because there's a lot of resources on it. If you're just unfamiliar with um, you know, more of the ins and outs of the transformative agreement. And also there's a chance if you really, really do not want to publish under OA, under the agreement, um, you can certainly reply to the email there and inform our team of that. Uh, but most of the time when this happens, it's really just for simple misunderstandings. But um, yeah, there's no opt in required. So if you get this email, you know, you can explore the resources and stuff, but you don't have to reply really um, to, to opt in. So we're talking about the CCBY a little bit earlier. Um, I'm not going to play this video, but if you just are unfamiliar with, um, you know, the CCBY license, um, we have a person from our legal team was super they we really appreciate them for doing it, but they created a video that basically is almost like a little tutorial to the copyright form and the process. Uh, it really just gives you a clear understanding of like why we, we use this particular copyright, what are the benefits, and um, why it's important that you need to sign it to publish under the agreement. So Feel free to watch this video on our YouTube. It's, you can just search IOP Publishing. It'll be one of the first videos on, the, on our YouTube. So feel free to explore that in your free time or when you're publishing your next paper. And lastly, I just wanted to throw these other resources here um, if you wanted to dig into some other elements of our support and training. Um, we have our peer review excellence hub. Uh, this is you'll probably something you'll hear or you already have heard about, but it's a great place if you want to um, improve your skills as a peer reviewer. Um, we have certificates and training and plenty of resources on there uh, for you to explore at your leisure. Then we have our general publishing support webpage, uh, which, you know, ranging from transformative agreement publishing, but it also has like other little resources like tracking your article. Um, there's a guide for early career researchers. Um, there's also the open physics hub, and that is where you can kind of learn more about our transition to an open science future. You know, as I said, as a publisher, we're really trying to do this thing right. So this is where you can um, find out all of our initiatives and endeavors um, chasing that transition to an open science future. And lastly, I have already kind of shared with you the TA hub, but these are best QR codes at the bottom. Um, feel free to bookmark these. It's just really helpful to know um, that you're whenever you have any questions, there's plenty of resources for you to find what you need to do to publish under the agreement. With the end goal, we want more and more people to publish OA. So please explore those resources, use the tutorials um, whenever you can and for your next paper. So 
Thank you. That is actually all that I have. Um, I'm not sure if we have any questions. Um, I might have gone a little quick there, so I apologize if anything. I'm just looking at the questions now. Let's see here. So one question we have is how long does an agreement last usually? Um, these agreements are traditionally three years long. So there is a decent length for them. Um, you don't have to race to get in there, but there are some agreements that are only like one year. So, you know, it's just always good to check um, your particular institution. My apologies, I'm just reading through. Does only the corresponding author need to be eligible? And that one is a, a yes. Um, currently, we don't have co-authors or co-authors are just not eligible. Um, so it does indeed need to be the corresponding author. Um, so that that person's affiliation is definitely the, the most critical for inclusion under a transformative agreement. Um, we have another question here. Can fresh graduates without an affiliation with any organization publish an article? If no, how can a fresh graduate publish an article? So I would say, unfortunately, to publish an article um, OA under a TA, you unfortunately would have to be affiliated with an organization. Um, there's still opportunities to publish. Uh, the unfortunate case obviously is, um, you know, it depends on if you want it open access or not. But as I said, if you, in our hybrid journals, you know, you can publish on a subscription basis and your article will be behind a paywall, um, but you won't have to pay an APC. Uh, so there is that avenue for you. Um, but obviously if you're not affiliated with an institution, you can't quite take advantage of our APC free open access publishing. Um, let's see, can a paper that has already been published non-OA in an IOP hybrid journal be converted to OA? So this is a good question. And the answer simply is yes. Um, we can make articles open access retrospectively, um, within a year generally. So if you do feel like you did publish a research uh, paper recently and you didn't get any email from us and you want it to be OA or, you know, you feel like you missed something, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, that is my, e the email inbox that you can reach us at any time with questions is TA at IOPpublishing.org. Um, but we can probably track that down for you, but just generally speaking, um, yes, we can make articles OA. Uh, retrospectively. So we have another question here about which journals are covered by TAs. And um, without going line up by line with them, generally speaking, we have over 70 journals that are eligible. Um, that's the majority of our journals. And they are broken up into various lists. There's only four lists, A, B, C, and D. Um, and most of our agreements include all the lists, which include about over 70 of our journals. But there are a couple institutional agreements that you'll just kind of have to see like, oh, it's only the list A and B. So that means, you know, it's a smaller subset of journals. Um, but yeah, the majority of journals are covered. So but again, you can use the TA hub to kind of verify which lists are particular to your institution's agreement. And let's see. So it looks like I only have one other question here. Um, and is there, it's a simple one. Is there a limit on an, the number of articles um, that you can publish under a TA? Um, or is there a funding pool to be depleted? 
And I guess it, so it's two questions, but uh, basically the answer is no to each. Um, our agreements are unlimited. So you can publish as many papers as you'd like and continue to not have to pay APCs. And, you know, the agreement, since we make these deals with, uh, make these agreements with um, you know, your libraries, it's already, already paid for. So it's not like every article you use is kind of depleting some funding pool. Um, we encourage you to take advantage. The more articles published, you know, the better it is um, for you and the library. So generally speaking, there's no limits. It's unlimited and there's absolutely no funding pool to be depleted. So get out there and take advantage. Um, and that was the last question I had here. So if I don't have any more, then I think um, that might be the end of the session here. I just wanted to say thank you um, for taking the time and listening. I hope uh, some of this was helpful. Um, I think most importantly, we want to spread awareness about these transformative agreements. Um, we, you know, we want to scream it from the mountaintops. So any questions, like I said, email us at ta at ioppublishing.org. Um, and please share the news uh, with any of your colleagues or um, anyone who might be looking up or any prospective author, really share the news. It's, it's, it's a great benefit to take advantage of. So thanks, everyone. Have a good day.